is joining us now. I think I'll take the chance to those of you who are new to the session. I see we have a few uh, new people. Oh, I'm not actually sharing my camera yet. So let's let's make sure we do that before we jump in. Let me know if you still see the PowerPoint. Can you still see it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay. I will enable a little bit the video, at least if um, all our connections allow it for. I always like it, make it a bit more personal because we used to do this, um, we used to do the, run this uh, Zoho user sessions face to face when we started. So we're already on the 29th session. Uh, we host these sessions uh, really to um, give free, free tips, advices on advice on um, how to use Google CRM, uh, Zoho CRM, and other Zoho tools. So today we kind of thought of focusing about Zoho CRM and how we're going kind yeah. of to use different functions of the CRM to grow our business. Together with me, so I'm Anna Yardley, partner at Gravity. Uh, we use Zoho and we're a Zoho authorized reseller and partner. Yeah. So I can see some of you have the right. microphone on, which is totally fine. Right. Barb, I think we can hear yeah. you. I don't know if you want to be heard. Right. Barb, can you hear us? Oh, okay, cool. All right. Oh, and thank you, PowerPoint, for updating. It was it was struggling a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so let's kick start. So together with me, it's Nicole um, and Kayla. We're going to also present some of the topics today. And uh, Kayla is going to help us as well with any Q&As you have. Uh, please feel free. We really like this to be uh, a moment where we go through the agenda, but we have uh, Q&A always open. So feel free to interrupt uh, with a message on the Q&A section. You should see it on your screen on the left or just unmute yourself and ask the question. That's sometimes just easier. And as I said, we used to do the sessions um, face to face. <laughs> now we kind of moved it all to online, but we still want to have a feel for being able to help you with your CRM and how you're doing it. So we're always easy to kind of swap and, and share screen if needs be. So the idea today is to uh, have talk a little bit about lead generation by your website, how you can connect both, because that is, is, is something we've seen through our clients that really, helps boost um, not just the activity, but actually this connection between what's out there in terms of website and uh, the sales team. And then we'll be talking a little bit more about prospecting and how to use the CRM to correctly prospect, insert the data and making sure that it, you keep it clean. So um, the first topic I think I'm gonna ask Nicole to um, present. Nicole, let me know if you want to share your screen. So I'll just stop sharing and pass it on to you. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. Let's keep your screen up for the PowerPoint. And when we switch over to that example, Ollie will start sharing. OK, cool. So let's dive into. Perfect. As Anna was mentioning, we work with a lot of clients. Sometimes we actually see them. They don't have web forms on their website, which for one is really going to help them capture high interest website visitors and it's going to allow you to engage with them. That is one of the most important reasons why we have those web forms on your website. You can also then from once the lead comes in, you can send automatic replies so you don't need a salesperson to actually be sitting there watching the lead come in. In case it comes in at like 9 p.m., 2 in the morning when people are doing their initial searches. You can also automate your lead generation process and assign incoming leads to the correct rep. That way they can be notified right away, make sure they're following up within that 24 hour window or the 48 hour window that you're promising people that they'll hear back from someone. It's also gonna help you improve your lead generation. If you don't have a web form on your website, someone's just gonna go to someone else where they can actually find the information and the level of contact that they need from a representative. So we will walk through an example of how to set up a web form from your Zoho CRM onto your website. So Anna, if you wanna stop sharing, I will share my screen. Right here. 
Yes, and as Nicole goes through the example, I think this is usually when users just, you know, kind of have their questions starting to pop up and things. So feel free to share those in the Q and A or just unmute and we'll so be happy. Can so can everyone see this gravity page? Yes. All right. So we're going to start here. Say this is your home page or your contact us page. You just have questions about your services and you need to add a web form here. So first we're gonna go to our Zoho CRM. We're gonna click the little settings icon, and then we are gonna find web forms right under the developer space. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new form. And you're gonna wanna make sure that this is flowing into the leads module. You do have the two options, but you definitely want it to be a lead so that you can get notified when it goes into your CRM. So we will do contact us and then test. You can really name this whatever you want, whatever kind of form you have on the website. Create. And then this is your builder. So you're gonna put whatever information you want them to fill out. And then you can do the settings right here on the side to either mark it as required or a hidden field. Something that's really important um, is this lead source. So for Gravity and what we do for most of our clients is we will hide this lead source and mark as a hidden field so no one can see it. But when it comes into your CRM, you know exactly where it came from. So then you're gonna, if this is a page that you set up for LinkedIn marketing, for example, you would put LinkedIn marketing as the lead source. So when it comes into your CRM, you know exactly where they saw your ad and came to your website from. So for this yes. purpose, oh, go ahead, so Anna. let me let yeah let me add something there. So depending on how sophisticated you want to go, right? You could just have a contact us um, page on your website, and that's the only one. And then Nicole is going for a bit more of advanced options, which works really well. Is if you're sending an EP or if you're doing an advertising on LinkedIn, you could have just copy your contact us page and change the, just the web form, so you know exactly that the only people who see that page are the ones who came from that advertising or that EPUB you sent. So you could do that. It's a bit more advanced, but <laughs> it, it's that it's easy. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification, there, Anna. Yes, as Anna said, you can do either one. I did want to show everyone the full capability of it. Um, but if you don't want to do a hidden field or the lead source, you can keep it as simple as you want. First name, last name, an email address or phone number. So the next you'll go save. And then you will go next up here. And this is where it's going to live. So you want to take where you're going to be putting the form, take the URL, copy it, and we are going to put it into here and just add that location. And then the landing page is where you want them to go after they submit the form. So a thank you page or something right along those lines. So we have a thank you page, so I'm gonna copy that and then add this right here. And then you can assign an owner. So this would be, they would be notified as soon as the lead comes in on the CRM. So you can assign it to yourself or anyone else on your team. And then you can hit notify lead owner. So then they'll get an email that just lets them know that they had a new lead come in. And then also you can acknowledge the visitor and you can choose a response um that the crm sets up or you can choose say you have a template so this would be once they fill out the contact us form they submit it they'll get an email to the email that they provided thank you for contacting us we'll be with you within 48 24 hours whatever you would like it to say so you can select your template here from your pre-designed templates which we've gone over in some other crm Zoho user sessions as well. You can pick any of these. For this example, we'll just pick this one. And then you're going to go ahead and click Save. The embedded options will come up, and you're going to want to go to the iframe option, copy that code, and then you're going to go into the back end of your website, 
and we'll add it to our code block here. Save that and then update the page. And we will refresh here and our form should be showing up right down here once this refreshes. So as you can see, we have the title of the form, first name, last name, website, email, and then you can submit it. So let's go ahead and do this real quick, submit. And then it'll take you to that thank you page. And then to make sure that it's working, you can go over to your CRM, go to your leads, and here we go. I am right there. Does anyone have any questions um, on setting up the web form? I know I kind of went through it fast, but if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A or email us afterwards as well, and we'd be happy to help you with that. Yes, let us know if you have. All right, for now, I'm gonna pass it back on over to Anna. All right. So what we've noticed is um, a, true, a true automation, and there's a lot of time savings. There's a lot of everyone on the same page when clients are using this. I just want to have a feel for, so I'm just gonna, could I start a quick a quick poll? Um, can you see a poll? Could you let me know if your website forms are connected to CRM? Yes or no? Thank you. Okay, so it looks like we're not 50-50, but kind of close. So if if it's something like this that's stopping you or access to the back end or i hope it kind of we were able to show that it's simple enough um you could also um you know set up just a contact as if you have a bit of a more rfq process the form can be a bit longer and have more fields so you can ask for more information you can play with you know mandatory information like an email because you need to reply back or non-mandatory fields so it's something you want um to adjust to make it as light as possible so if you need help, just as Nicole said, send us an email. Uh, our contacts um, are available on the website so we can help you with this because it really improves lead, lead generation and having the sales team working through it. So super important. So the other element that's super important as well, a lot of our clients um, do prospecting and we also do the service um, for the clients. But the main thing I wanted to share today is really about how to do it in Zoho CRM because there are different ways to, um, let me go back to my list. So actually before going this, I just wanted to have a feel, if you're currently doing prospecting, are you currently um, do it yourself? Do you have someone in the sales team who is doing prospecting? So just have a quick feel of, of the room. And prospecting, you know, usually it's literally looking for new business, adding those contacts, um, some people buy lists. Okay, so we have a bit of a mix. So, so not currently, yes, do I have a continuous process going on? Um, yes, but not continuous, okay. So if you're currently all um, with CRM, kind of what you can do for this is, and you're still seeing my PowerPoint, right? So we should be able to jump into, um, let's jump into the CRM. So my advice here is really, as you're going through, obviously the main goal is gather new contacts. So you have new people to talk to, but then it's super important as well to actually talk to those prospects. Um, so our last session last month, we talked a lot about this automation and how to build workflows. So today I, I'm, I wasn't going to go there. I was going more on how to set that up if you're um, starting to prospect. So really setting, you know, account types, ownership, creating new contacts. How should you do this in the CRM? So your CRM usually, right, CRMs you could have in Zoho, you'll have your leads, which Nicole just went through, and this should be fresh stuff that you're dealing with. Um, you have your accounts, which are the companies you work with, and 
our prospects as well, and then contacts who are the people who work on those organizations. So when you're doing prospecting, is really about you know having new contacts in with key contact information. And for us, really a phone number, but mainly an email. It's still the most affordable way to communicate. So to add this, you have kind of two options. You can be creating things by hand. So if you're creating things by hand, you should always create the account first and then the contact. So if you have someone else doing this or you're doing this, you can always in Zoocerm, you can create an account from here, but there's also this drop down option that just lets you do it quickly. So let's go into create an account and I'm gonna create this a demo account or use a group. You see, there's a lot of stuff here. What I want you is to be sure that you're kind of smart when you're defining what fields you want for your business. Um, so the main thing is identify always what type it is. So let's say this is really prospects because this is what I'm talking about. I need an account name. And then if I have more information, it's important to use things that could make that account unique in the future. So whether it's a phone number, um, whether it is uh, an, a website is something very useful as well that could be very useful. So I have that field for the reasons here, but we could be using website here. Um, also, super important address. You might not value it today, but you'll be valuing if you have you know sales team on the road, um, if you start buying lists and you want to understand which businesses you already have, because sometimes the names are different. So a lot of very important to kind of keep this data, but I would say minimum is your account name. Is it a prospect? And if you have a website, if they're online, because that will allow you to, I'll show how that will allow you to kind of create unique records as well. You see, there's an option here as well. The Zoho, depending on the version you are, allows you to have that enriched data. So it could actually tell me, hey, for this company, there's this information online. So you can check and just add the ones you know are real. If I could update it right now and save. And now let's go to the main thing. So the easiest way to add if you're doing one by one is really add contacts manually. So from the account, you would add your contact. And what I want to highlight in terms of prospecting is let's say that now you have a name, you asked your salesperson also to have a last name, okay? And you have an email. It's giving me my test. But with this, this contact is kind of going to be a little bit lost. So I would really advise you to do two things. Uh, one is define every time you can a drop a drop down option. So if you have like a persona, personas are just clusters of titles because titles could be, you know, you could have CEO, president, the, the managing director, they're all the same type of role um, usually for businesses. So independent of titles, you could create this persona who is owner, president, CEO, or you could have your sales lead, for example, your marketing lead, your operations lead. Obviously, this will have to be adjusted to your business. But it's a very simple way to be able to create communication and direct different communication to different clusters, if you know what I mean. So let's say Chris is the president. And this is OK. And then what else could be important? Um, you could define, I kind of prepared a little, a little Excel file, because I know a lot of you still work with Excel. And I know I'm saying there's a lot of you because a lot of the businesses we work with, um, this is what happens. Um, some people do prospecting, for example, they, they have you know, old contacts uh, when they hire a new salesperson and they want to um, add those contacts to the CRM. <clears throat> so I've seen a lot of bad examples in the past. Just check if we have any. Okay. Um, of people doing this and then messing up data very easily. So to avoid that and thinking of prospecting, if you prefer and if you're more comfortable working those contacts and if it's faster sometimes to have things in Excel and then import, you have to be very careful how you do that because you want to make sure you're not importing trash. So quick tips here would be to think who is the owner of that contact. So for this, you can use a ZID, which is a, a Zoho ID number, <clears throat> but I would advise you to use the email of the user in the CRM. <clears throat> so in this case, my username is my email, my graphic email. I'm adding the company name, the interest of that company, because that will allow me to segment. First name, last name, which are minimums. Uh, an email, I have a title so that I can figure out who they are. And then super important here is, where did I get that contact from? So was this a list purchase? Was this 
uh, actually, you know, sales prospecting? Um, was it a trade show? So we using here, I'm going to show how you could adjust this. But you want to have this, you probably want to have your lead status uh, clean because you haven't contacted them yet. That's why you're importing them into the CRM. And then as a tip, I would add something we call uh, email workflow, which will let you kind of say, okay, all these prospects I'm going to talk to, I want to send them like a first email. So if I have the field created in Zoho, it makes it a lot easier. If I don't have it, there's a shortcut, which is just creating a tag as well that you could use. So if I have this file, Save that I'm going to import it into the CRM. Let's jump into our CRM example. Okay. When I'm doing it one by one, the process is a lot more qualified. You usually can go through more things, uh, but you could also miss some, some steps. Oh, of course. See, good example. I was going to talk about this. So it popped up. So when you're importing, uh, you will get this sort of uh, notifications if you're importing your prospect list um, in a bulk after importing the file. If you're doing one by one, you get the alert right away, which is from a sales pers management perspective is really good because it allows you to know, okay, this person already is already in the CRM. So instead of doing this, let's just see who she is. So I can actually just search on the top bar, press enter and have a feel for everywhere where Anna Yardley is, which is you know, a few places in the CRM and then I can see okay this is actually you know she's already working for this company so the contact is already there that's perfect I could still send my emails I could still uh, follow up but I don't need to add this duplicate data so that kind of connects with the two things I wanted to make sure that you know you set up that account type so as a prospect you give ownership so it doesn't stay on your plate if it's not for you to work on and then you create the new contacts associated with that so what I'm giving you on this example of this, and I, and I can share this quick sample, is I'm creating an owner from start. There's a company, which is the account name. So actually, I'm going to change it just so it matches fully. There's an industry, and then this is actually contact information, right? First name, last name, title, email, lead source, lead status that I'm not going to use for this purpose. But I'm going to use this email workflow. So let me show you how that will come in. So you, we can communicate with prospects. So on the back end of your Zoho CRM, you have a section called customization modules and fields. And if you go, so there's kind of two key modules here, as you saw, accounts and contacts. So for industry, I want to make sure the industry is at the account level, but the email people are going to get, I want to get at contact level. So I'm coming into this view, this layout. And that's where you can play with all your fields. So this is going to connect, I'm going to jump straight into how to keep this data clean as well, because um, that's the key element. So I'll share, we'll share all these materials with you after the session. But the main point here is look at your contact information. This is a demo account, so, so there's a lot of stuff here. I want to say that I want to set that email, right? So I could have an intro email, I could have a follow-up email, I could have different emails I'm going to send to my prospects, but I want to know that each person is not getting two emails at the same time. So what I suggest is to use this pick list field. I'm just going to add it here for now. So remember I called it here email workflow. So let's call it email workflow. And let's say option one is going to be like your intro prospects email and then you could have you know further down the line let's say you'll have another batch of whether it could be like you know offerings or you know, like special placement this would be different email flows right so xyz doing this allows you to make sure that when you import those contacts and I have on my Excel, for example, these intro cells, they will all be attached to that email workflow and then I'll have to have something else to trigger it. But what I'm trying to keep here is the same as I did with personas. I don't have a free field for personas, right? I have a drop down menu on purpose because I want to make sure that people are funneling information into certain categories that are meaningful for the business. And that's super important when you are prospecting so that you prospect and you add contacts to the CRM in a clean way because you'll, you'll avoid a lot of headaches and costs um, if you do it that way. 
So to keep your data clean is really about having unique fields. Those means that our uniques, um, these fields cannot be duplicated. What does that mean? For example, account name is a unique field. Email, you see here, email unique. So when you're setting the field up, you just have to mark it as do not allow duplicate values. And then the pop-up message I got will show up and that avoids people from um, adding the same person twice or three times. Um, and also when importing contacts, you will get the same alert saying, hey, this email already existed. That's why it wasn't imported. So that's super, super important. Um, if you have a unique ID for importing contacts from other systems and you wanna use like a unique ID, you know, some people use Zoom info or other systems, it's hard sometimes to use the account name uh, to map those because um, account names, you know, some have a dot, a dash, a space, um, limited, not limited. Uh, so that gets very difficult to be clean. Emails is very easy. A website is also a, a very good field to make unique. What are the other things that are important at the account level? When you're prospecting, I would focus really in just this account type to start with. So you want to make sure you have prospect as an account type. And then to know where the contacts are coming from, I would advise you as well to use lead source. So if you're you know, prospecting, um, if you have a salesperson, if, you, if you're outsourcing a team to do it that for you, if you bought a list, those are very different ways to get contacts. So the more, options you have on that lead source, the better, because it allows you to know exactly where they came from and evaluate you know, down the line, um, where is business coming from? Where are the sources that are more valuable and actually generate more business to you? So with this set up, with this option set up, you can now easily go to your contacts. And now I can use every field I have here. So for example, in this example, in this list, I have interest area. I could now use the fields to create, let's say this is you know, a contact interested in advertising. So now what I could have is I can build something with this. I can create a segment. I can send a certain email to this if I have a mass email set up. Um, I could uh, allocate it to a salesperson and say, you know, there's a salesperson on the team that's going to be working these contacts. Uh, I could define tasks. For it. So as soon as you start having the if data with uh, these fields um, allowing you to segment it, then you can start playing with it. So how are we in terms of, of the team? I don't have a feel for it, so there's a lot of new people that I don't know um, in this session, so I, I have no feel for how deep you are in your CRM. Sometimes the things I show here are very basic, some for other people that could be advanced, so there's kind of different experiences. So any questions out there? And feel free to unmute yourself. It's just easier to ask a question or, you know, ask Ayanna, can you show me how you worked on this or that? Anna, it does look like we have um, one unanswered, more of a um, scenario almost. Yep. Yeah, thank you. So duplicate fields are difficult. Uh, yes, for example, we work with saloons and a very common name is Tropical Tan. <laughs> yes. Sometimes also a company with a multi-location chain and may have a single email for all locations. Ooh, that's that's a hard one. So how have we, it's not the first time I've encountered that. Yep, we have, you could use parents accounts there to organize when it's the, the case of multiple location. And the other thing is, I try to make sure that the name of the organization, so the name of an account should always be something that could go on an email. So if you think about it, if you want to separate them, them somehow, what we've used is the location, whether, depending on how fine it is, sometimes we need to go to state level and that's enough, sometimes country, sometimes actually city. So tropical tan in Milwaukee um, or tropical tan in, you know, uh, Florida, if, if state is enough to kind of differentiate, probably not, probably we need city there. Um, so that's one way to adjust the account name. So you're not so focused if that's the true legal name, but you really want to make sure that, you know, tropical tan, and then you create that, those rules. So actually a cool tool, let me just show us um, to do that. But I would still, even on that case, I would still create the account name. Uh, I wouldn't allow duplicates <laughs> because at least, you know, you you won't have the same exact name out there. 
Um, so one cool thing is, so obviously I'm not allowing, oh, it doesn't allow me to have tooltips on the account. I was just going to check. Let's see, yep, no. So you can create, this is a bit more next level, but you can create validation rules for account names. I wouldn't, it wouldn't sort, solve your problem. So I wouldn't go that way to say, using this criteria um, to validate the account, like is the phone number, is it gets, if it gets, if you, from my experience, if you get too much in the way of users, they stop using the CRM. And that's the worst outcome you can have is, if your team is not using the CRM, it's, it's bound to be dead or stalled um, soon. So I wouldn't go that way. I would do two things, use the location or if there's something else that it's valuable for the business on the name, so it makes it unique. And if you only have like one email, then obviously if you want to communicate with all those accounts, you can't make the email unique. Or if it's just for organization wide, you want to know who it is, then you could have, because usually that's the same company, I would use the parent account for that. So the relationship between parent and child. And if you have, for example, Tropical Tan <clears throat> um, as one big company, let's say, in their franchise, but you want to have that info email just for the parent account, you could have that at the parent account level. So a contact for the parent account, and then each one of the other ones would be a new one. So a parent account is when you create an account, you have an option to have a parent. I don't actually think I have, uh, yep, yeah, I do. I don't have parent accounts on this example. I don't think it's it will still show on the parent account here on the account. So I usually create it like this. I like to give it a name so I know exactly what I see. Let's say let's tropical ten, and I will call it parent account. So I know I'm never going to use that exactly. I just want to know the relationship between the others. And let's say this is a prospect. <clears throat> And then under this account, yeah, it's not gonna let me because I don't have the functionality set up. So I would have to go on the back and create it. Always by default, you have a parent account on your CRM. But I deleted that function because I don't use it. Basically, all the other accounts are going to show under the member account. I kind of missed time there. Let me just check. I assume we would have to clean up our duplicates before we could turn that requirement on. We already have many duplicates. Now, actually, you can turn the requirement on, Jeff. Uh, it will work on the future date, so it's always useful just to turn it on. And then if you're trying to import stuff and it detects that it's a duplicate, it will still raise that flag and it will stop people from adding the, the new name. So I would definitely turn it on anyway. Okay. Any other questions? So we had a we had another question here for before, but that was answered just, I don't know if all the other users could see it about the forms that Nicole was using. Um, so here, what you could see in terms of, um, I'm using this an enterprise version, but because I'm using Zoho One, Zoho One has all these apps. Um, so it's a very good pricing scheme because you get, um, if you're a small company, you can just pay all employee pricing, um, which will be around $35 per employee. But you do have to have all your employees and everyone that has an email account or computer, you know, laptop. Um, but if not, they also have a, a price um, for just over $90, but you get all these apps. So it's a very affordable. And that means, when I mean apps, is you have the CRM, you have campaigns, um, if you have a big list, for example, of prospects, that's something, yes, before I forget, so before just a second, I wrap up, one of the things I want to make sure is, well, I think we talked about all this, you know, having unique fields, the drop down options with the lead sources, the personas, using the right field type. So if it's dates you want to gather, use a date field. Um, if you want dollar amount, choose a dollar amount field <clears throat> and so forth. Keeping mandatory fields to a minimum. So you don't stop your users using it. Um, but then the other thing is, if you have a list of you know, 3,000, 1,000 contacts and you think that's prospecting, that's probably not prospecting. That's what I call buying a list of emails or 
um, you know, just gathering mass information. If you're not sure if those are worth the value, I would advise instead of dumping them into your CRM, which I've seen a lot of clients do, and then they end up with a very messy CRM that just loses value. I would advise you to use Zoho campaigns for that and the beauty of these being connected. So import that list into Zoho campaigns, send an email with your company information, but just to test out the waters, see if those emails work and then bring into the CRM the ones that open your email, for example. Um, so I would just literally import a list. Um, so actually let me, yeah, let me create a new list. So if you have them in Excel, it's very easy to create a list and import those into campaigns, send an email and test the waters before you dump them into your CRM. And I'll kind of have to wrap up here because we could be talking Zoho for ages. So we're open for questions. Uh, you can ping a message to any of us or just on social media, our website, whichever way it's easier. Uh, or just join us in our next um, session. We have a session every month uh, where we bring different topics, but we would really love to answer the questions you have. So if you have any items you like when you submit your form, just um, yeah, just go ahead and, and tell us what you would like to see, and that allows us to uh, adjust the session. So we're quite flexible. We can talk about most things here. So yes, yeah, so just let me know if you have a, a two seconds to, did you learn something new today in this session? And if not, that's fine. Uh, let us know uh, what else would you like to see on the session? Because that's that's what this is for. It's for users. So with this, I would say thank you so much for joining us and looking forward to hearing from, from those of you interested in learning more. And see you next time. <laughs>